Wow. Obviously very powerful stuff. Very difficult to follow. That banger by Cyrax. Um, you know, before I get into the main topic of Cyrax claiming that he was too ugly to graduate high school, uh, I do want to quickly point out a new piece of Cyrax, big boy uh, racing getup that he's got going on here. Um, shout out to Tawdry Hack. Thank you very much for uh, uh, sending me this link. I got a real kick out of it. Um, you know what? Here. Um, shit. Um, let me. F I, I really should have came prepared here. Um, 
trying to find the link where you sent it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, obviously, you guys all know about the big boy steering wheel. Uh, I, I don't need to, to tell you about that. Um, let me scroll down here to get the Duke timestamps. Um, but uh, even even more adorable and, and silly and ridiculous is Cyrax's new racing harness. Um, let me uh, try to cue it up here. Um, all right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna poke around and try to try to find where it is. Um, okay, look, check this shit out. Check this shit out. Prepare to have your mind blown here. Adding to Cyrax's big boy racing wheel, his little footy pedals. He now has a harness for his seat uh, so he doesn't fall out of it while he's racing and hurt himself. Check this out. I mean, prepare to have your mind blown. Um, I did a little bit of cursory research and was able to discover that it is the uh, 44,334th most popular video game accessory. Um, and I don't know how many there are in existence, but I would imagine this is in the bottom 2% of sold products. Check this shit out. All right, you can see the two straps right there with the clips. I don't know if Cyrax has been falling out of his wheel a lot, uh, I'm not sure if, if, if that's an ongoing problem. If so, I would probably invest in a racing helmet for him way before I would buy this fucking contraption because it just seems like a fucking stupid piece of shit. Um, it's right here. And I'm going to throw this on. It's cool as fuck. Yeah, he also says this increases, well, I guess decreases his race time. It makes him faster. Um, it makes them more efficient and effective. Uh, I don't understand how. Yep, they're rainbow colored straps. That is true. A fucking horrible. Down here. <laughs> In the comments here. See, like I'm trying to click hide on that. Um, yeah, it's gonna bother my ADD. I think I'm just gonna reset the fucking thing here. Give me one. Give me one moment. Uh, okay. All right. There we go. Oh, all right. And right here. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's the Weird. And the other strap goes over. Like this. And they just do the same thing with the other one. Most of the time I attach them to this right here. Like, why would anybody ever need or use this? This is only sending him deeper into his delusions. Like, people can say what they want about Sally. Um, I'm not sure how many people have actually had the privilege of speaking to her back in the house phone days. But she could be a reasonable woman sometimes. 
and even kind, you know, um, and cordial. It was strange because, I mean, we'd be calling her at like four in the morning, you know, just ringing the shit off the hook. And, uh, you know, sometimes she would actually make sense. But by buying Cyrax this fucking get up and convincing him that he's a race car driver when he's just a, a sad little fanatic, it's only doing him a tremendous disservice, in my opinion. Like, this equipment should be tossed. Um, you know, if Cyrax wants to play race car driver, let him make enough money to earn it. So he, 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 this isn't all just a fucking joke. And, and then maybe he'll get in touch with reality at some point. But as is, Sally, this was the worst thing you could have gotten him for Christmas. I would much rather you have gotten, or got Cyrax a straight jacket and put him in it. It, it would really be uh, infinite with his mental health. It's actually got a really cool clip set right here, which I fucking love. True. That's true. This thing's got this little loop right here. Yes, it is a it is it is a racing contraption. That is correct. Uh click it or ticket. Yep, yes sir. Yes, sir, that is correct. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Safety first. Look how proud he is. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this is made for children or if this is adult-sized. I'm not entirely sure. Nice instant wheel rig. I tell you what, I want to set you guys down. For yeah, he's just eager market. to put his new equipment to use. Um, and most ridiculously, he says that he's explaining how it helps his performance. It helps him stay centered. I'm not sure when he says it. And I know what you're thinking, dude, why use a racing rig? belt if you're not in a race car? Why use it's, it's a great question. I think it's a question on everyone's mind. Why use a racing rig belt when you're not in an actual race car? A racing rig. I know what you're thinking, dude, why use You know, that's very perceptive of Cyrax. He's usually not so in tune with other people or reality, but he was able to read the audience's mind here. And hopefully he'll come up with an eloquent explanation on how he benefits from its use. And I know what you're thinking, dude, why use a racing ring belt if you're not in a race car? Because it helps keep me steady on the track. Yeah, it helps keep me steady on the track, guys. Like it helps keep me... In my seat, it keeps my back aligned. It keeps me. It helps keep him in his seat. It keeps his back aligned. <laughs> well, you know what I was thinking here. Uh, here, one second. Ah, sorry, just a little bit of a dry throat. Um, hopefully, Sally got this harness and is going to strap him into his chair until he finishes his thousand laps. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Just, uh, just <laughs> tighten him in and, and keep him stuck there until he does what he's agreed to do and what he's claiming he can't do and what he was born to do, in some people's opinion. I don't know. But uh, if, if that's its intended use, then I would say, okay, Sally, that's a great great Christmas, Griff. Um, lovely. Fantastic. So, all right. Um on to the meat and potatoes here. Uh, Cyrax claiming that he was essentially too ugly to graduate from his high school, from North High School, the, uh, the sweatshirt he's got on him right now. You're going to learn a whole lot about the school system in Akron and abroad. Um, one moment here. Uh, okay. 
Yes, perfect. Okay, here we go, guys. Um, it's going to be a fairly brief stream, maybe 45 minutes or an hour from here, and then uh, it's time for bed, as they say. What's up, guys? Chance here. Right. Fix this. You want here? Um, you guys are probably wondering what this live stream is about. Well, give me a moment to do what I usually do. And okay, let me give you a little bit of a preface here. He is about to expound and elaborate upon a concept known as selective passing in which any student who has less than a 4.0 grade point average is not allowed to graduate unless they are attractive or athletic. Um, athletic people and attractive people are given a free pass through high school, and those who are five foot one with weak wrists are simply not allowed to graduate, and they're colluded against by the administration. It is a multi layered, multi faceted scheme here meant to oppress and repress um, Cyrax and people like him. And I will explain everything. What's up to everybody watching right now? I'm not sure who's watching, but uh, what's up? Give me just a moment here, and I will explain everything entirely. Because this is something that's kind of been on my mind that I feel needs to be spoken about. It does. It does. And not just as a, I was originally going to make this a post on Facebook, but I figured, no, I better put this out in the open. Yep. This is a hard-hitting expose on the Akron school system and on the American education infrastructure. So that way maybe something can be done about it. And in case you guys are wondering, yes, I'm rocking my North High School hoodie. Well, it's weird that he is rocking this North High hoodie considering the claims and allegations he is about to unfurl upon the North High School, <laughs> the, the Vikings. From here in Akron, Ohio. And uh, a little bit of trivia in the chat here, or if anybody watches this, uh, you know, tomorrow, basically. Uh, what high school did Cyrus go to previously? What was the name of the high school? And what was their mascot? Go North High Vikings. Much love to you guys. All right, what is up, everybody? Um, you guys are probably wondering what this live stream is about. Well, it's something called that. I okay, the discrimination that Sardex is claiming he experienced, it just seems very bizarre to me that you'd be wearing the school's sweatshirt almost as if he continues to support them, despite their plot and ploys to uh, discredit him and to hold him back from achieving his potential. It would almost be like um, one of those guys uh, in Penn State, one of those kids, uh, wearing a Penn State sweatshirt after Jerry Sandusky fucked him. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of sends like a dual message here. Like, are you a victim or... Or are you a fan? Are you just a real big fan of, of Penn State? You know, uh, you know, I'm not going to victim blame those kids. God, you know, uh, God forbid what happened. Uh, did watch the uh, Paterno documentary yesterday. Uh, not, not good. Not good, Jerry. Not good. I picked up on on my own through, you know, various friends who actually went to the same school as I did and other friends that I grew up with who went to other high schools. Who All right. Nobody got the answer correct. I'm a little bit disappointed in you guys. Um, the correct answer was the Garfield Rams. He used to wear the Ram Pride wristband uh, until 
I, <laughs> I suggested the fact that he wore that uh, wristband as proof that he belonged to Ram Ranch Records and does belong to Ram Ranch Records. The Cyrax brand does belong to Ram Ranch Records. Uh, if you're not going to wear it, Cyrax, you might as well send it to me. We went through a similar situation. And I'm not sure. Like, there's not really any name for it, but everybody that I know of is calling it the selective passing process. Yeah, the selective passing process. Now, I, I encourage and implore all of you to Google in quotes selective passing and high school in quotes, you know, to isolate both search terms. Uh, the only references you will find are in reference to high school football teams who I guess had selective passing games, you know, where they were, I guess, ran the ball a lot, um, you know, and then selectively passed. Uh, but aside from that, there is no record of this term existing in applications to discrimination uh, towards graduation for, I guess, ugly or unpopular students. Like, I've never heard of this before. No one else has Cyrex. This is merely a fabrication, a concoction, all of your own. And you guys are probably wondering, hey, what's the selective passing process? Like, what does this have to do with our school systems? Well, allow me to explain that to you. What does selective passing How old is Cyrax? That's a great question. Yeah. I, I know the answer. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to allow the chat to uh, take a guess at it. Uh, I do happen to know the answer. Sorry. So basically we're led to believe here uh, greetings, Kerry Silveri. Uh, greetings, Stewie. Welcome to the stream. Um, we're basically led to believe here that if you got a B on a, on a spelling test, guess what? You're not graduating high school. Uh, you know, you, you got a D on a constitution test, guess what? You're not graduating high school. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Um, sounds plausible. I know what you guys are thinking. Hey, if I have all my credits, you know, how can they keep me from graduating? Well, trust me, they can because the school board's in on it as well. Yeah, the school board's in on it. The teachers are in on it. The coaches are in on it. The fucking janitors are in on it. You know, if you rub them the wrong way, no matter what you do, um, you know, you can put all the right answers in on your on your math test. Doesn't matter. Like two plus two <laughs> equals four. No, nope, not anymore. CSI Rex, you know, no, nope, you fail. Uh, you know, who's the first president of the United States? George Washington? Nope. It was uh, you know, Camp Time Racing or something. You know, Cyrex is, is is trying to lead us to believe that correct answers were rejected and proven to be false. And uh you know, I, I perhaps, maybe. He seems to have several friends who this has happened to as well, several unfortunate victims of this administrative dis discrimination. It's just really terrible. What they would rather do, instead of helping... Oh, shit, my bad. Yeah, man, you got it, you got it, you got it. Work very hard. And you guys are probably wondering, hey, what, who actually went to the same school as I did and... Yeah, so Cyrex and his cronies and his flunkies, uh, literal flunkies, uh, all banded together and came up with a theory on why they aren't being allowed to graduate. Other friends that I grew up with who went to other high schools who went through a similar situation. And I'm not sure, like, there's not really any name for it, but everybody that I know of is calling it the selective passing process. And again, yeah, and I don't know if, yeah, I'm not sure what was lost or, or what you guys missed out on. Uh, but if you look up the selective passing process in regards to high schools, um, it seems to be a football terminology and has no reference 
or, or no acknowledgement rather by any institution as a legitimate concept that is ongoing or has existed or could exist. Yeah, I was wondering, hey, what's the selective passing process? Like, what does this have to do with our school systems? Well, allow me to explain that to you. What the selective passing process is, if you do not have a 4.0 GPA or higher, than a 4.0 yeah so if you don't have a, a perfect grade point average you are disqualified you are not allowed to graduate it's just not going to happen no matter what you do see ya bye bye you're gone you're donezo the schools basically make it impossible for you to graduate i know what you guys are thinking hey if i have all my credits you know, how can they keep me from graduating? Yeah, I mean, what is pi? 3.14159? No? Well, you lose, Cyrax. It, it, it's actually zero, so get lost. You're not graduating. You can you can take your cap and gown and wipe your fucking ass with it. We're not letting you graduate here at North High. And if this was the type of process that Cyrax endured, why would he proudly be wearing the sweatshirt today? Well, trust me, they can because the school board's in on it as well. What they would rather do, instead of helping those out like myself who work very uh, Dogs of War, I'll have you know. Um, this is a little known fact, but Cyrax also claimed that he could have been a professional baseball player uh, as a pitcher if it wasn't for high school baseball being all politics, uh, another form of discrimination that he was forced to endure at the cold, cruel, callous hands of the North High administration. Um, you know, I asked him like how fast he could throw. He said, you know, about 50 to 55 miles per hour, you know, which would never come anywhere near a professional baseball field. But um, he still believes that it was all politics and, that he somehow was the victim of mistreatment. Maybe so. Be hard. But if you're going to consider that, please watch this video about Cyrax's discrimination and consider and, and uh, weigh that as a factor because it seems to all just be in Cyrax's head. To get the credits they need to graduate, they would rather focus on the look of the school they would rather focus on you know their school's status or yeah so basically what he's saying here uh if, if you're like a handsome kid if you're, if you're a, a, an attractive young lady the teachers are going to give you high marks because it keeps the school beautiful Instead of helping those out like myself who work very hard to get the credits they need to graduate, they would rather focus on the look of the school. They would rather focus on, you know. You know, and this automatically defeats his premise that um, the school is trying to beautify its appearance by getting rid of the uglies. Because if that were the case, you would think they would, would have let Cyrax graduate and try, instead of trying to keep him around. Uh, could he be arguing that he is so handsome and such a stunningly breathtaking man that they wanted to keep him around the school just to keep up appearances? Um, because if they wanted to get rid of him because he's ugly, they would have allowed him to graduate, I would think, instead of trying to keep him around. But, you know, uh, also, you have to consider what Skull Kid has divulged and unearthed uh, about this potential bathroom masturbation incident, which forced him to leave the school in disgust and disgrace. Um, who knows? You know, uh, we'll never really know what happened. Um, but the lack of clarity in his claims, in his argument, does kind of lend credence to this potential bathroom jerk-off incident. 
know, their school's status or the highest um, scores in the school's football games or, you know, they would rather focus on those students who are like, you know, the valedictorian and then... But yeah, sir, the valedictorian is going to graduate high school. Like you, you would, you would hope, you would think that he would graduate high school once he, you know, committed something terribly indecent. Uh, you know, the MVP of the football league and the schools and stuff. Sir, if you can't graduate high school, you're a fucking idiot. I'm just sorry, man. Like it's what it, what it boils down to. You're a fucking dunce. Uh, I don't know how many people had a 4.0 grade point average. I don't think everyone had a 4.0 grade point average that graduated. I just find that highly implausible. I think somebody might have gotten a C chemistry at some point. And uh, by your terms, would have been ineligible to graduate. Because later on, Cyrix says that he had 3.8. Uh, but his grade point average wasn't good enough to graduate. It just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, uh, I'm going to pay attention to the chat here. If you guys can come up with your own theories on what happened, I'd love to hear them because this is very murky and very convoluted. And you guys are probably wondering, where am I getting all this from? Well, I myself have been a victim of this. Yes. Yes, I am. No. I've been a victim of the selective passing process. Because, see, I never got to graduate. And the reason why is because of the school system. See, going into high school my last year. Yeah, I'm sure like a, a school board meeting, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're talking amongst themselves. Like, hey, you know what we got to do? <laughs> we got to get rid of the ugly kids. <laughs> you know, no matter what answers they submit, you know, what's six times seven? 42? Not anymore, ugly. No. See you later. You know, but better luck next year. Good, good luck uh, passing our classes. Um, it's just crazy. I was very, very far behind on work, credits, all that stuff. And, you know, I had really, you know, sat my butt down and I put in the work. Like, I worked my butt off day and night to, you know, catch up and do what I needed to do to graduate. I mean, I don't know if you've seen him write at all. Um, there's a reason that his book projects are strictly picture books. Um, I don't know how Cyrex is able to look at his clear deficits and not just – well, I guess it's probably difficult to accept that you're just a dummy. Um but uh, I think he truly believed that his work was exceptional, just like he does with his music. You know, the only thing he really does well, in my opinion, is dancing. And he's an incredible little dancer. And I've always said this. And I just wish he would take my hand and trust me and go with the process. But when COVID dies down, and sorry, if you're listening, and, and I know you watch these, so just so you know, the offer's on the table here. When COVID dies down, and, you know, there's – people are allowed to attend sporting events. and You know, the subways are open. And, uh, I would love – and I'll even pay you up front. Uh, I'll pay $200 up front, you know, and every, anything else I get to keep. But you're going to be working six to eight-hour days, spray-painted gold, dancing the robot outside of baseball games, uh, outside of train stations – you know, possibly at busy intersections and you get your 200 bucks and I get everything else. And you're going to dance in the snow. You're going to dance in the sleet. You're going to dance in the hell. You're, you're going to be out there. In fact, it might be more than 68 hours a day. You might have to work 14 hours a day to make your $200. But the point is, Cyrex, we're going to be, if you get on board, you, you can have a chance to do what you love, which is your art. And we can both, Make a make a make a nice living from it, and you know I'd be living my dream. And if you wanted to play your music while you danced, or you wanted to rap while you danced, 
and you can consider it a musical performance, and that'd be great. I don't care what you do, as long as you're dancing in that gold outfit. And I had been able to confirm that yes, I did have all of my credits. Like, you know, I was able to confirm that I had all of my credits. You know, I had turned in all my senior dues. I had paid off everything. And, you know, I was doing really good. Like, I was literally, like, I was close to being in the top of my class. Like, I was really close. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. And I think I had, like, a 3.8, 3.9 GPA. Like, I was only a couple points off of having a 4.0. I mean... Like, I had worked my ass off day and night. Yeah, so... Sorry for the cussing. I know what I said this morning, but... Yeah, so Cyrex uh, may have gotten, like, a B, a couple Bs over the course of his four years uh, at North and Garfield High. Um, and I guess that just wasn't good enough because they, they got to get rid of the uglies. It seems to be like a common goal of the school board. Yeah, just go with it. And, you know, that day before graduation, you know, we did our usual thing. We had an assembly for, you know, students and stuff like that. And, you know, I ultimately wound up receiving the most approved student of the year award. Okay, I don't know if you guys uh, have this and you're respected at, at your, uh, what do they call it, uh, at your old stomping grounds, uh, but did you guys have the most improved s student of the year award? I can't say I recall that. Yeah, Winston Churchill, absolutely, absolutely. 3.99 GPA, yep. Yep, no good. No, no, no good, not going to cut it. Um, yeah, I love when people pop in Defense RX. They have no clue they're defending one beater. Well, I, it actually gets a lot worse than that. Um, it's a little too late to get into it, a little too dark, because uh, what has been uncovered about CyRx is honestly depressing and disturbing and depraved. But um, he was in this bizarre online sexual relationship where he and Heather one, uh, or it may have been Heather two. I'm not sure which Heather it was, but he and Heather were sexually like the mommy and daddy of a little baby. And they all had an intimate and loving relationship, but the, the baby was an adult. It was like this weird guy. Um, and I'm going to have to get into that at a later date, but I'm just letting you know, like it's going to be dark and, uh, I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to hop off the ship. And, you know, what, whatever I, I say or think doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, what's about to be uncovered on Cyrax is going to change your opinion, uh, the hammer. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's you – know, there's your attention. You know, all right, nice. Because, you know, I worked so hard to, you know, get to where I was at. And, you know, later on that day, we did rehearsals for graduation. You know, we went through the whole process where every student is going to sit. You know, what's going to happen? We had gone through all of that, like, that next day. <coughs> so, yeah. if this is true, they were just lining everyone up for the graduation. And they, they saw that Chance would probably be standing in the front row since he's like a midget. And they're just like, ooh, <laughs> you know, can't, can't have that. Can't have that. I guess we're going to have to keep him around for another year to finish his credits. And we'll, you know, we'll say that all of his answers were wrong the whole time. But upon further review, uh, your essays were shit, you know. And they, they definitely were. If you've seen him writing, he, he, he doesn't use any periods or commas. And he'll make a single sentence turn into a paragraph. And, um, you know, it's just really tough. It's really jumbled. And um, I would love to see him write an essay or see some of his old work. You know I love a good essay. 
you know I love a good essay if you if you follow me. Um <laughs> you guys are like let me know down in the comments if you guys are noticing any change in the screen. Because I did brighten it up a little bit, so it should have it should help. Hopefully it did because I did brighten it up. And I didn't know I could do that on this, so yay me for figuring that out. Even though it was simple. Yeah, like Basic algebra. Um, I still didn't know. But anyways, back on top. You know, and, you know, like we had gone through the whole, you know, process, like I said. You know, we had gone through rehearsals, you know, all day long. You know, we had finished up what few classes we had. And, you know, then it was time for the seniors to head out. So, you know, we wound up heading home for the day. But during that day, I got called out to the... And he talks about the school's posterity and trying to keep a, a strong image and maintain a positive reputation. But I would, I would think that like their graduation rates are probably like the number one metric that they use and they probably don't want to have to hold anyone back. Um, especially if they're a problem like chance, you would think that they'd want to get rid of them. Principal's office. And I figured, you know, maybe I was going up there to, you know, get my cap and gown, you know, all that stuff. Cause they were doing that throughout the day. They were calling students up to get their cap and gowns for graduation as they were getting there. So I figured, you know, all right, you know, I'm going to go there, you know, pick up my cap and gown, you know, grab my stuff that I paid for and then head back to class. What is the HB pencil? Um, yeah, I mean, I know about like the, we had number two pencils. I don't know, uh, HB, uh, but I remember like number two was a pretty big deal. Well, instead of picking up my cap and gown, you know, the principal said that they wanted to talk to me. So I was like, all right, you know, like, I think maybe something was up. You know, like, maybe I forgot to pay something off or something like that. Forgot to pay something off. You know, I, to the best of my awareness, and maybe you guys have different experiences, but... You never had to really pay for anything. Um, uh, you know, aside from, like, for, for sports, uh, like, if you lost a jersey, you'd have to pay for it. Um, uh, you know, and that happened uh, a couple of times. Um, but even, like, say that I didn't pay that off, I would imagine that I would still be allowed to graduate. Like, they wouldn't be like, nope, sorry, you're not graduating. No, all your credits, we're denying them until we get our 130 bucks or whatever it is. You know, it's just outrageous. Um, I, 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 I have no idea what Sarah X is talking about here. Uh, did you guys incur any high school debts? Like, he's talking about a public high school here. Um, what kind of debts could there possibly be? I mean, I didn't know. I was like, all right, you know, like, whatever, you know, pick up my cap and gown or, you know, something. Like, you know, along those lines, I didn't know what was coming next. I come to find out that the principal sat down and had a talk with me and stuff, and they straight out said it. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Tadri. Um, <laughs> you know, the principal uh, was just lying in wait and setting his trap to, to ambush Cyrax, to build him up and to break him down, to let him know that he's going to be kept around for another year because his good looks need, are needed to beautify the school. That because I don't have a 4.0 GPA and that because I supposedly don't have all my credits, which I did. Okay. If you don't have a 4.0 grade point average, guess what? Bye bye. See you later. Um, I think by that definition, North High School is a harder school 
to graduate from than Harvard University. What do you guys think about that? North High School is harder to graduate from than Harvard University. Because if you get one bad mark, you're done so you can't graduate. that I was not allowed to graduate with my class. True. And I are Yeah, but but Cyrax is saying that he worked his hardest and he and he really came from behind. So I don't know. There there do seem to be some inconsistencies and contradictions. Argued with my principal back and forth for like an hour straight, you know, probing to her time and time again that, hey, I have all my credits. You need to let me graduate high school. Like, you need to let me graduate with my class. Because I had already paid for my cap and gown. I already had paid for my yearbook. I had already paid off my senior dues. Well, yeah, he probably paid for all that shit and wasn't doing his work or his failing classes and was just not getting it, was just being a fucking idiot. And, you know, he's obviously very impossible to work with. I'm sure the teachers at first wanted to give him a helping hand, would bend over backwards trying to help him get it. But he's just, uh, you know, if he was a dum-dum, I think they'd let him slide. But he's just such a piece of shit and such a little fucking jerk-off that he becomes impossible to deal with. Plus, you know, from time to time, I would help out the school newspaper whenever I could. Like, not, like, all the time, but, you know, like, I would, you know, give them ideas on stuff they can write about or stuff, you know, that was going on in school that they kind of wanted to know about from time to time. So, you know, and I did that, and it was pretty fun doing that, actually. I kind of enjoyed that. I mean, what did he do? Sorry, hang on. Was, Plus, you know, from time to time, I would help out the school newspaper whenever I could. Okay, if you've seen them right, you know that that is a virtual impossibility. Like, not like all the time, but, you know, like, I would, you know, give them ideas on stuff they can write about or stuff, you know, that was going on in school. Yeah, and um, I'm sure he was a real helping hand. That they kind of wanted to know about from time to time. So, you know, and I did that, and it was pretty fun doing that, actually. I kind of enjoyed that. I know what you guys are thinking. Why didn't you join the school newspaper? Answer to that, didn't really have the interest in it until, like, literally my last year of high school. I never really took a real interest in the school newspaper until last year of high school because I didn't realize how much of an impact. I wonder what that moment was when Cyrax had this – deep awakening, this profound realization that the school newspaper does make a giant impact on the students' lives. Like, what story did he come across that was so poignant and compelling that it woke in a passion within him? Was that that moment that Cyrax realized he needed to be part of the school of journalism. I wish I could have read that article that inspired him so deeply. And how much of an effect it had on our students until that final year. Well, you know, like, they had told me that I couldn't graduate, and as I just said, you know, I argued with them back and forth for like an hour straight. Like, literally an hour straight. And, you know... I mean, here's what I think happened. Um, I think Cyrax lied to Sally and told her that he was on pace to graduate, and she probably inquired, like, hey, Cyrax, do... So you're going to need a cap and gown this year, right? And he probably was like, um, yeah, sure, Sally. Okay, whatever. And, and lied to her. And uh, it all came unraveling uh, in the final days before graduation. That's just my hunch. I don't know. 
So I straight up told them, you know, if you're not going to let me graduate, then I may as well just say screw this and walk out and quit. But just know that one. 94 in the class. That's not bad, Tadri. But guess what? That falls short of the 4.0. If you went to North High, you wouldn't get to graduate. I walk out. I will be fighting this. And, you know, ultimately, they, that's what I wound up doing. They would not let me graduate. So, all right, this is here. Let's see, it keeps tipping upward. There we go. But, you know, ultimately, they did not allow me to graduate with my class. And so I wound up walking out and quitting. And, you know, I had called my mom up. I didn't know what was going on. I had gotten home that day, sat down with her, explained everything that was going on, you know, about how I wasn't allowed to graduate, even though I had all my credits. And actually, I wound up with a couple extra credits. Yeah, so not only did he have all the necessary credits, he had extra credits. I want to say those extra credits were for Algebra 1 and 2 and I think Language Arts. Like, I don't remember what the extra credits Okay, like if the extra credits are Algebra 1, then those aren't extra credits. Like, I, And it, it's been a while, obviously, but um, I think it's like a freshman in high school course, right? Like Algebra 1. Even if you're like a dum dum, um, I don't, that can't be like an extra credit. It's pretty elementary, you know. Um, uh, uh, this just isn't adding up, sir. X. Credits for four, but I had a couple extra. In language arts, I think that's like grade school terminology. Well. You know, we had eventually wound up Correct. You know, fighting it. And, you know, we had on the school board and everything. We made our case. You know, we put together our case to fight it. It showed tons of evidence yeah. proving to them that I should have graduated. And unfortunately, I was unable to win that case because of the fact. Yeah, so what it sounds like is Cyrax wasn't able to complete Algebra 1 and therefore couldn't graduate high school. It's just, I'm not trying to like laugh at him, but that seems to be what really happened. There wasn't any preference to the jocks or to the attractive people. Um, it, it, there is no inherent bias or scheme to deprive the uglies of their diplomas. I just don't see this taking place. And, you know, if there is, then Cyrax should definitely reach out for an attorney and he can gather up all the other misfits and they could file a class action lawsuit. That the head principal of these high school is buddy buddy with the head person at the school board. Like, they're really good friends with the head of the school board. and Oh, shit. Yeah, Big Will, uh, let it be known that uh, the little violin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Big Will, it should be known that Cyrex uh, did believe you committed suicide last night, and he said you basically deserved it for, for disrespecting his music. So, you know, you got that coming. You know, all kinds of stuff. And it was a mess. We fought it for about three, four months. And unfortunately, due to that, and our school has been way up, I was unable to graduate. And do I have the answer on, you know, how to prevent stuff like this? I honestly wish I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> learn your times table, Cyrax. That's how you solve this problem. Because there's too many students like myself who've gotten ripped out of their high school diplomas because of these freaking school boards 
because these schools are too interested and too hooked on sports being the best in their city. You know, I would imagine that for a school to be the best in their city, they would have to have perfect or very high graduation rates and that you would only be a blemish on their, on their record. Cyrax. You know, keeping their ratings up and all that shit. Like it is honestly ridiculous. Like whatever happened to helping students like myself out. And one of the students that was like myself in that situation is actually my very good friend who is literally my little sister, Stephanie Sinso. Like, you know, she got ripped off of, she got her high school diploma ripped off too. Yeah, I wonder how hers was ripped off. And we both went to the same exact school. And I honestly don't know how many other students went to that school or how many got ripped off. Well, you could easily tell how many students went to the school. Sorry, Rex, you said that you bought the yearbook. Um, just add them all up, sorry, right? Just count them, count them all down, you know? Uh, make an X off of each one of their names, and you can you can go down the list, sorry, right? It's just that easy. And I would imagine that it would not be too difficult to uncover how many students graduated versus how many students did not graduate. Ripped off, but it's really unfair. No one got ripped off, sorry, right? Just shut it. There is. You know, this happens. Every year, there are students like myself that don't graduate, who deserve to graduate high school. Like, something needs to be done. Well, again, Sarah, I suspect, or suggest, rather, a class action lawsuit uh, to hold everyone accountable who is promulgating and proliferating this selective passing that you have fallen prey to. Like, you know, it really isn't fair that this goes on. No, total bullshit. Real tragedy and a travesty. We get it. You know, you guys are probably thinking, well, why didn't you, you know, go for your GD? Well, here it costs a lot of money to do that. Sorry, because it doesn't cost any money to go to high school and pass. And we don't have that kind of money to get in the class that I need to get my GED, otherwise I would work. But, you know, you know, yeah, we do consider my most impressive of the year award. Oh my God, have you guys ever seen or heard of the most improved student of the year award? Like, oh, man, I'm waiting, but it's not the same. No, you're right. Uh, uh, the most improved student of the year award and a diploma are not the same. One is a real thing, and the other you made up. <laughs> you know, like, it's just that simple. Like, and I don't know whether it's happening in just here in the Ohio school system or if it's all over, but if it is... It needs to be put to a stop. Like too many, you know, students like myself have fallen through the cracks over the years, and they wonder why. They're all left wondering why. Like, what did I do wrong? And if you are in that situation, like I was, I want you guys to know that you did nothing wrong. You did everything you had to do to graduate. Yes, I'm talking to you. The people out there that are watching this, that are in that situation that I was in, I want you guys to know that you did nothing wrong. 
It was the school systems that messed with it. Yeah, you don't know your timetables? Not your fault. The school systems are picking and choosing who graduates and who doesn't. Yeah. You guys didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's completely arbitrary. It's just either at random or simply because teachers and administrators have a disdain or a dislike for a particular student, they'll single them out and deny them graduation for no reason whatsoever. The school systems are. It's not your fault. Picking and choosing who graduates. And who You're not a dumb dumb. You guys didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> and if you do start to notice it, instead of just sitting there and letting it happen like I did, because I had no idea of the signs, I had no idea that there were any signs to. There are no signs, Cyrex. You didn't pass Algebra 1. No, it's this type of thing. But if you are noticing that, don't just sit there and let the school principal and these people in the school system bully you around. Stand up and say something. Fight back against it. Don't do like I did and wait. Because by the time you wait like I did, it'll be too late. Interesting. And you deserve to graduate with your class. You deserve that. Uh, so, Carrie, have you noticed or observed any students being given the selective passing routine? Wait a second. So it only costs 30 bucks for Sardex to get its GED? Okay, so your offer to Sardex is that you'll give them 30 bucks to take these GED courses. I mean, if that's all it is, then all right, I encourage you to give him the 30 bucks for his GED. But if it's anything more than that, it's just a waste of your money. He's a dumb dumb. You deserve to have a future. And I'm telling you guys this so that you are made aware of what's really going on in these school systems that they don't want us knowing about. And I figured it out on my own long ago, but I didn't really have the courage to, you know, really speak up about it until now. Cyrex, if you are able to illuminate this selective passing process, you will be a hero. Um, I'm not sure if you could be eligible for, no, I don't think you would be. I think only your attorneys can make referrals and profit off of lawsuit suggestions. But, um, I mean, you would definitely make a name for yourself and you'd be in the front of every newspaper in your town, in your state for discovering this really fucked up discriminatory process known as selective passing. You know, I would gather up all your facts. I would make your argument and I would lay it all out there. And You know, you can be the, the ugly little sawed off Aaron Brockovich, you know. Like, I was sitting down working on my music label's website and getting that built up, and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, you know, like, how did I get in this situation? You're done, though. You know, being as I am to where I don't have a diploma, and I was like, you know, I really need to you know, speak up about this, like something really needs to be done. So I urge you guys. Dum Dums Unite. Level, if you guys start to notice this, and you guys know that you have all your credits, and that you have the stuff to graduate, and they're still not letting you, you know, get your parents involved, get your family involved, get your neighbors, your friends, you know, get a teacher that you trust. You know, get everybody that you can involved to put an end to this because it really needs to stop. It really does. Because I don't want to see our future generations of students end up like I did. 
I'm 27 years old. No job, no education past 12th grade, no high school diploma, no GED. And that's not my fault. It is because of these school systems that I'm in the situation that I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I could have had a great paying job. I could have gone to college, which I was planning on doing. Because that week before the whole ordeal happened, I had applied for a college called Musicians Institute out in California. Let me take a look at this. This sounds like an outright scam. Okay, yeah, it's a for-profit institution. It's a, it's a fucking joke. Online music courses. Jesus Christ. What a fucking laugh. Good thing you didn't start X. You would have gotten burned, dude. Very interested in music just as much as I am now. So, you know, I wanted to further my education and, you know, make it a career. And, you know, if I hadn't been able to go out there, they would have, you know, taught me how to do music the proper way. Yeah, he still hasn't learned how to, how notes are or scales or what else is there? Tones? Like, he knows none of it. He, all he basically knows how to do is to find uh, copyright free beats, claim them as his own, rap over them, and waste his time. That's all he's really ever accomplished. He, he's bounced around between at least 18 different record labels, uh, none of which he's made an album for. Uh, as Big Will says, he only has himself to blame, you know? How to mix, how to master uh, filmography, which is like filming and shooting, you know, videos, music videos, you know, TV shows, all that stuff. They would have taught me everything I needed to know in that college. And I literally applied there that week before. And I had gotten my acceptance letter that day. You know, I would be surprised if they still wouldn't have accepted him. I think they would basically accept anyone that is willing to pay. And you don't even need to graduate high school to attend this fucking place. Let me see here. Let me just take a quick peek at uh, Musicians Institute in uh, California. Okay, it is rated one out of five stars. Um, yeah, it would have been a disaster if he attempted via online. Or they had called me down. And, you know, after the whole ordeal happened, I literally had to sit here at home in our living room. And call up the head <laughs> of the totally structure there. And yeah, uh, I guess like uh, the Trump University was was a reach, and uh, Musicians Institute was a fallback. And I explained to him the situation and why I was not able to go, and it it killed me to do that because I'd worked really hard. You know, I had financial aid helping me with. You know, the costs and everything, like, I had everything going for it. But because of the school board not letting me graduate, I lost out on a future. I lost out on all that. True. So I True. guess the lesson for this video, if you start to see this kind of thing happening with you or somebody that you know, don't just sit there and do nothing. Yeah, like Cyrex, if you're not passing Algebra 1, don't just sit there and do nothing, you know? Um, I'm sure even if you just had a good attitude, your teacher probably would have given you a D-, you know? But you're just such a little jerk-off that you, your attitude ruins everything for you. Stand up and help. You know, you always say that your physical appearance is what holds you back. 
It's really not. It's your fucking attitude. Speak up. Because I'm sure I'm not the one who's happy. I'm sure there's many others out yeah, there. Yeah, he's saying, he's saying that uh, anyone who doesn't have a 4.0 GPA isn't allowed to graduate and that the school board and the teachers arbitrarily at random pick students out who they decide aren't going to graduate and then they make their life a living hell. Yeah. That's that's what he's claiming. It's happened to and the schools don't want us to recognize that this is going on. And I know what you guys are thinking is probably just some correct, you know, stupid thing. But I'm here to tell you that this is very real. This is not fake. You know, I'm living proof of that. And so is my <laughs> best friend Stephanie Sun. So if you, you know, look her up on Facebook, she's on my friends list. That's Stephanie S I N. S E L, I believe. But me and her both are living proof of that situation. Mm -hmm. They're dum dums. Yeah, if you guys want more proof, you guys can look up, like I said, my friend Stephanie Simpson, that is Stephanie. S I N S C L. You guys can look her up off of Facebook. Me and her went to the exact same school. Hang on one second. I'm gonna have to get a hold of this. Oh shit! Oh my god! I got a Facebook message from one Tony Bain. Greetings. That is a shocker. A, a greeting from Tony Bain Jr. I uh, was not expecting that. What a pleasant surprise. I wonder what he what he what he's up to. Let's give him a call here. Well Yeah, it's getting late. It might have to uh do that at a later point. A little fucking creep. And we had just caught up recently. And, you know, because we hadn't seen each other since high school, so we wound up catching up and talking to each other. And that's when she informed me about what had happened with her and her situation, which was literally the same exact situation as mine. So, you know, if you are going to high school or if you have kids or if you're an adult or a parent and you do have kids that are in high school, you know, always check their credits. Like, always ask your kid how many credits they have. And if they don't know, they can easily go to their counselor, their principals, um, even their teachers. You know, you know, have them find out how many they have. Find out how many credits you need for your school system to graduate and sit down with your son or your daughter or whoever it is that you have that's in high school and go over how many credits they have. And if they have enough credits to graduate high school and they're still not being allowed to graduate, Speak up and say something. Do something about it. Because this is a very real situation that happens all over the United States and all over the world. There's too many students being cheated out of their high school diplomas. There's too many students like myself being cheated out of their futures. All because the schools want to be ignorant and selfish. Instead of worrying about education, helping those students that really need to help graduate, they would rather focus on basketball teams and having the best city ratings. They would rather be the best school in the city than to help that one student. Well, I don't know if all of their time, effort, 
and energy expended on helping the basketball team win a game or two really stop you from learning your times tables. Um, yeah, sorry, I was just thrown off for a little bit. I got a message from uh, Tony uh, wishing me a Merry Christmas. Uh, I just responded, I'm Jewish. That wants to graduate, that works hard to graduate. Instead of helping that one student out, they'd rather focus on the school status and where they stand and the standings of the school. And, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. There needs to be a change. And honestly, that change needs to start now. It really does. So if you do have, you know, a child or are in high school, you know, share this video around with everybody that you know, man. Like, if you guys want to, you're more than welcome to download this video. There are various sites where you can convert. <laughs> I mean, you should just call this entire effort uh, Dumb Dumbs Unite. You know, I think that's got a nice ring to it. If you were a dumb dumb, get a hold, get a hold of me. I'm, uh, you know, I'm leading the charge. Against corruption and bias and discrimination towards dum dums. Download this video. Um, you know, share it with everybody, man. Share it with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, aunt, uncle. You know, neighbors. Share with you know those in your school that don't know what's going on. Share with your teachers. You know your principles, everybody, share with everyone. Like, you know, this needs to be sought after and put a stop to. It really does. Like, this is very serious. And I know I'm not the only one that's gone through this. I know there's many others out there like myself who have gone through the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Dum Dums Unite. Okay, all right. Um, this one is pretty interesting. What up, y'all? Um, yeah, I'm actually probably going to... Uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to leave this running here. Uh, I got to head out for a brief moment. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave this running probably. Uh, everybody, thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, you guys tuning in, as always. Um, that's that. Uh, yeah, well. Buenos noches, and uh, have a pleasant evening. And I guess morning, probably more so now. But, uh, yeah, farewell. Godspeed. I want you to watch and I wanted to talk about something here. And this is something I, but I have a friend named Bucky Jones who is on the run from the police. And the reason I found this out is through my now ex-friend, Ashley Armstrong, who, by the way, thinks that her knowing the info that she knows is not harboring a fugitive. And she's sitting there saying, I'm a snitch. No, I'm not a snitch. I'm trying to do the right thing and bring down a fucking criminal that needs stopped. How is that being a snitch? This guy has been on the run for eight years. Eight fucking years this guy has been on the run. And actually, you knowing what you know about Bucky, it don't matter whether you were there or not. You don't have to be there to be harboring a fugitive. You are withholding info you are aiding and abetting a fugitive that's on the run, knowing what you know. And you don't need to get involved with that. So you can think I'm a snitch all you want. You can fucking hate my guts. I don't give a fuck. But you doing what you're doing is a crime. Ask any officer. They will tell you the exact same thing. You don't need to get involved with that. You need to turn his ass in. He might not know exactly where he's at, but he leaked out info knowing that, you know, somebody would say something. 
And you can think that people treat me like shit because I'm a snitch. You got it all fucking twisted, bitch. It ain't because of that. It's because of my physical appearance and how I fucking am. It's not because of that. It's because of other shit. So don't fucking sit there and say that it's because of that because it ain't. You got it fucking twisted, sister. Which, by the way, if you weren't any kind of family, you wouldn't be harboring this guy. You would be saying, hey, look, you need to do what's right and turn yourself in. But no, you want to sit there and call me a snitch? Really? I ain't a snitch. I'm just somebody who's trying to do the right thing. And doing the right thing is turning this guy in. Which you can run all you like to because guess what? I have both your Facebook and his and both y'all's pictures. So don't sit there and think that you can get away with this. Because what you do harboring and aiding and abetting. Knowing where this guy is, you are aiding and abetting a fugitive. And that's not okay. If you weren't any kind of family, you wouldn't be sitting here doing this. You would be turning him in. You can say I'm a snitch all you want. You can run your mouth around me all you like. I don't give a fuck. But you know what? I'm not a snitch. I'm not. When you say I'm a snitch, that makes it sound like the jugglers are a gang. And they're not a gang. They're a family of underground people who enjoy the same kind of music. It's people like you that give the jugglers a bad name. Because you treat it like a gang. It's not a gang. They're a group of underground music-loving people who enjoy bands like ICP, Twisted, ABK, Blaze, Tech 9 Thompson. But you are no juggalo. You are a fake. You're treating it like a gang, and it's not like that. It is not a gang. Because you know what? A real family member from the jugglers and turn that person in. That's what they would have done. I'm sorry, but I don't aid and embed criminals. That's not me. I do the right thing. Yeah, he might have a lawyer, but that don't mean shit. He's been on the run for eight years. And they will catch him eventually. Eventually, they will find him. And when they do, he will go to jail. And if they find that, that you knew any kind of info, they'd take you to jail too. And like I told you, you don't need that shit. You don't need to be going to jail. You're aiding and abetting a criminal. And that's not okay. At all. Like I said, you can hate me all you want. You can talk shit all you want. But the point is, you are aiding and abetting a criminal. A dude on... Hey, Henry, what's up, buddy? Um, it's a guy named Bucky Jones. He's on my friends list. And the girl that told me this, her name is Angel Armstrong. I can send you both links if you want them, man. All you gotta do is private message me and I'll send you the links. But she had just spoken with him a little while ago and told me about what was going on. And I'm sorry if I might seem like I'm a dick. Well, I'm sorry I might seem like I'm a snitch, but you know what? Being a snitch is better than having a criminal on my friends list that's wanted in several different states. 
Like I said, he might have a lawyer, but that don't mean shit. What it boils down to is that he was on the run. He's running from the cops. He's running from the police. You might not be able to trust me again. That's fine. That's whatever, dude. That's on you. But you know what? At least I'm honest and straight up. And yes, I consider myself a well. I've been with the underground family for as long as I can remember. And yes, I feel, I'll admit, I feel like the juggalos don't need to be on the gang list. Because there are people within the juggalos that, you know, they commit crimes because they're not right in the head. And then they use the juggalos and the music as a compound, which is bullshit. That's why we're all getting a bad name is because of people like that. And because of people like you, you sit there and you treat it like a gang. Makes people treat it like a gang. Because you sit there and say, oh, I'm not a snitch. I don't do this. I don't do that. No. I, mean, I can understand if, like, you know, like if you're smoking weed or whatever. I'm not going to say anything about that. But when you're on the run from the police for eight years, then, yeah, I'm going to speak up and say something. Because it's the right thing to do. But apparently you don't know what it's like to be an honest person. To go to the police and be like, hey, yes, I know this person. They spoke to them. And, you know, like you don't know how to be an honest person. You'd rather aid and embed a criminal. It, you don't have to be there physically to aid and embed. You could be holding information which I'm pretty sure you know. Do you not realize that that's idiot and betting a criminal? That's information that the police can use to bring him in to help him get back on the right track after he gets up. That's information they can use to find him and bring him in. That way he can get the help he fucking needs. But no, he'd rather aid in a bed of fucking th Federal criminal. And what you don't realize actually is I'm a lot smarter than you think. I'm two steps ahead of you. I have both your guys' pictures and both your guys' Facebooks. All I have to do is hand them over to the right people and they can hand them over to the authorities. And all I have to do is be like, hey, this person associated with this person. And they're going to come straight to you, knocking at your door, asking you questions. And if you don't tell them the truth and they find out that you did talk to him and you're not telling people what they, telling the police what they need to know, then guess what? You're just as much a criminal as he is. You're aiding and abetting a fugitive, a wanted felon. So like I said, you can call me a fake ass juggalo all you want, but in reality, you're the fake one, Ashley. You're treating it like a gang. I'm a snitch. Yeah, I listen to the music. Yes, I stick up for them. Because like you, I do agree that they should not be on the FBI list. I agree with that. Tell me I'm a snitch and that, you know, I don't need to be doing this. That's when it becomes, and it boils down to you treating the family like a gang. And that's not okay with me. And that's sure ain't okay with anybody else. So don't think that you can get away with it. Because let me tell you something. To the family, Melissa Sullivan, she never would have stood for this. And she was one of the originals. She was one of the first ones. 
And even she would have done the same thing I'm doing now. She would have done the exact same thing. See, y'all new school. Y'all got it fucking twisted. Like I said, I'm down with the clown. I listen to ICP. I listen to Twisted. I listen to Blaze and all them. You know, and I'll admit, the underground treated me better than most people ever have. But the one thing that confuses me is how the fuck can you sit there and say that people treat me like shit because I'm a snitch? Those two don't, it doesn't add up. That makes no motherfucking sense. It really doesn't. People treat me like shit because of my physical appearance. That has nothing to do with me being a snitch. It's because of my physical appearance. That's why they fuck with me. Because they feel like I'm the short guy. They feel like because I'm the short guy with the weird appearance, they can fuck with me. Well, guess what? I guarantee you the minute I go into that group, I will have a talk with the admins. I will have to have a talk with the administrators. And I will tell them what you and Bucky are doing. Because what you're doing, Ashley, is harboring a fugitive. And that's not okay. And like I said, you can spread lies and bullshit about me all you want, but the truth is, the minute I get unmuted from the True Juggle of Family Group, I will have a talk with them and sit down with them and be like, look, I know these two people, group. one of them is a criminal, and the other one is withholding information. That is a crime. So you can call me and fake all you want, but you know what? Reality is, you're the fake because you're treating it like a game by doing that. A true lower way would turn the person in, not out of hate, not out of being a snitch, but out of trying to help them. And that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you. But you're getting in the way of that. So like I said, you can call me a snitch, you can spoke. But the truth of the matter is, you are aiding and abetting a fugitive, Ashley. And that's not okay. But like I said, as soon as I get back in the group, I will have a talk with the admins and I will have you removed. Because we don't need criminals in our family. We don't need people that aid and embed criminals in our family. And that's how it is. Sorry to tell you, sister, but that's the reality of it. You need to wake the fuck up. Like I said, I might seem like a snitch to you, but ask any other motherfucker, and they'll tell you the same thing. What you're doing is a crime. that I have spoken to agrees what you're doing is wrong. Because like I said, I'm not trying to turn a man out of hate. I don't hate anybody. I really don't. And like, I'm not doing it to be a snitch. I'm not doing it to be a fake or a fraud. I'm doing it because I care enough to turn that person in to get them the help that they need to get them back on the right track. I don't turn people in to start trouble. I turn people in like that. I let people know what's going on with people like that to help that person. Because I care enough to give them a kick in the ass and be like, look, this is what you're going to have to deal with. You need to do this. You need to get back on the right track. Even if it means going to jail for a little while. So, no, I'm not a fake. 
Like I said, you can call me a fake all you want. I don't give two fucks. You can spread all the lies you want about me. But guess what? I guarantee you, 99 to 95% of the others will agree that what you're doing is wrong. And we don't need your kind in the family. We don't need it. Like I said, you can say I'm a snitch all you want, but the truth is, you're a fake. You're a fake because you say I'm a snitch, and that leads to you treating it like a gang. And that's exactly what you're doing, is treating it like a gang. You might not think you are, but guess what? Reality check for your sister, you are treating it like a gang by saying that. The minute you spoke those words, is the minute the minute you called me a snitch is the minute you started treating me like a gang and we're not a gang so you need to get your fucking facts straight first you might be older than me but guess what bitch I got more brains than you so guys um, if you do want the link to these people's profiles, let me know, and I will send them to you personally by private message in the True Dark Little Family Group on Facebook that I am part of. I wanted to let you know that I will be back within three days because I got busted for some shit. I got muted for seven days because I got involved with some stupid stuff and. You know, I'm open because of it, but I will be back in a few days to, you know, set things right with that. And like I said, as soon as I get back on muted, I will be speaking with the administrators of that group and telling the issue, like, I'm not going to make it public. I'm going to you know, personally private message an admin and letting them know what's going on. Because like I said, I'm not a snitch. I'm only trying to do the right thing. And the right thing is turning both of these guys in. That's the right thing to do. And not because I hate people, not because I'm trying to get anybody in trouble, but because it's the right thing to do. Because I don't want to see anybody get in trouble because they're connected to that person. You know, being true fam, you know, that means doing what's right, even if it hurts. Even if it hurts and you hate doing it, sometimes doing the one thing you don't want to do is the right thing to do. But to sit there and say that you talk to this person knowing they're a fugitive and you know a little bit of info that could help them. After he sat there and told you that he was on the run for eight years. Do you not realize that that is a federal crime? Like, seriously? Like, you must not realize that you're aiding and abetting a fugitive at all. Like, you must not realize that. But as for me being a snitch and a fake, you got it wrong. I'm not a fake and I'm not a snitch. I'm an undergrounder who's trying to do the right thing just like you. And even though it kills me, Turning him in is the right thing to do. Even though I hate doing it. I hate doing it. But it's the right thing to do. Not because I'm mad at him. Not because I hate what he did. But because it's the right thing to do. Because I wanted to get the help he needs. 
And so if you guys do want the links to these guys' profile, let me know and I will private message you them myself. Um, and like I said, as for those of you that are in the, in the Trigger Girl family group, let me know.